In 1992, Mr. Li Hongzhi introduced Falun Gong to the public in China. Falun Gong is a non-violent, high-level cultivation practice guided by the characteristics of the universe, truth, compassion, and tolerance. It has been influenced by Buddhism, Taoism, and ancient Chinese traditions passed down for thousands of years. Many practitioners experience better health and overall fitness. Falun Gong is not a religion because there is no organization or membership. Group practice, a standing and sitting meditation, is usually held outdoors in public parks. Most people exercise in the privacy of their homes. Because of this, it became extremely popular in China, and by March of 1999, the Chinese government estimated that over 70 million people practiced Falun Gong. The Chinese Communist Party felt threatened by this large number of people not directly under their control, and the government started to persecute Falun Gong practitioners. Soon after that, nearly 10,000 people showed up at the head government office in Beijing to peacefully protest. Falun Gong is now practiced in over 60 countries around the world, with many practitioners in the United States. To learn more, I went to San Francisco to interview three women who have been persecuted in China. I do the exercises very diligently and follow the philosophy of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance every day of my life. My three daughters noticed I became such a nice person. When the government in China started to persecute Falun Gong practitioners, I wrote a letter to the former chairman, Zhang, mentioning how I had benefited from the exercise. Both my temperament and especially my health had a great improvement. As a citizen of China, I had the right to tell the truth to the chairman what Falun Gong is really about. Just because of those letters, the local police took me to the police station and they put me in a cage where it was freezing cold because it was winter. The next day, they sent me to prison. They put me in prison for a month, just for those letters I wrote. In prison, I was being tortured very badly. After they kept me in prison for a month, they made my family pay $3,000, a year's wages, to get released. Less than a month after I was released, I was arrested again and was taken to a brainwashing camp. In the brainwashing camp, they would only let you sleep for about four hours. When you're not running or sleeping, they would make you watch a propaganda video. They made us run first thing every morning. If you didn't run, they forced you to stand facing a wall for an hour. If I didn't conform to what they wanted me to do, they would hit my head against a wall. During the brainwashing camps, if the Falun Gong practitioners objected, the guards would bring a large picture of Master Li Hongzhi and force them to step on the photo. Several people came and picked me up and brought me on the picture of Master Li on the floor. My spine was broken and they took me to the nursing area and left me without anyone to care for me. Even in the condition I was in, they refused to release me. I was kept in brainwashing camps for over three months in that kind of condition. Every day each inmate was in jail, they charged $50. I was in jail for over three months, so I needed to pay about $5,000. We were on a hunger strike three times, so everyone's physical condition was very weak. A few people were so weak that they were being sent to the hospital. I was one of them. Finally, I couldn't stand it anymore, and I mentally and physically collapsed. I had to sign an agreement that I would never do it again in order for me to get released. Even when I was sent back home, they had people watching me. Then in 2003, I finally came to the U.S. and I got to witness how people have their own rights. Fong Gong is legal here, so I started to practice once again. I come from Beijing. I have been practicing Fong Gong since 1998. 
I was Christian before practicing Falun Gong. Once I read the Falun Gong book, I wanted to change my belief system. Falun Gong helps people and their character. I saw Falun Gong practitioners seem to be much better people, and they seem to be healthier because all their illnesses seem to just disappear. In June 2000, I went back to China to visit relatives. My sister was also a Falun Gong practitioner, so she practices with other practitioners too. So they wanted to get together with other practitioners to share experiences. Somehow, this was reported to the police while we were having a meeting, and the police came and arrested us, taking us to the station. I told the police that we were just sitting together to chat, and they told me that if there are three more Falun Gong practitioners together, it's against the law. I asked, what kind of law is that? They said that their superior told them to do this. I felt that this law was ridiculous, and it was not a very good law. Because I was a legal U.S. resident, they released me from prison after a week. This touched me quite significantly. I was released because I am an American resident, but the Chinese people don't have that kind of freedom. The Chinese Communist government lied to the world and claimed that they could definitely host the Olympics in Beijing. They said one thing and did the opposite. They claimed to be improving the human rights situation in China and said it has gotten a lot worse. They said what they did to host the Olympics in 2008. As far as the Olympics are concerned, we welcome China to hold the Olympics, but we do not approve of the dictatorial government and their human rights policy. I was born in Beijing. I started practicing Falun Gong in July of 1996. At that time, I had a health problem. I slept a ruptured disc. I wasn't even able to sit down. I had to lie down and it was very painful. One of my co-workers told me about Falun Gong because I was not able to walk. My husband helped me to the practice sites. The first day, I did two sets of exercises, and then I went home. After I left the practice site, within 100 meters, I noticed that the problem was gone. So I ran home. From that day on, I have been practicing Falun Gong. Because I continued my faith in Falun Gong, in 2001, they kidnapped me and also ransacked my home. They kidnapped me and took me to a brainwashing camp, and there I was hurt very badly physically, and I had problems like high blood pressure, and my life was in danger. I asked them to let me go home, and they let me go. I was deathly ill. Of course, all of this was illegal, and I went back home, and in August, I found a way to go to Thailand as a tourist. In Thailand, I went to go seek help from the UN, and there they asked me some questions, and the one I remember the most clearly was, why do you continue to practice even though you know that you will be persecuted? And I told them that it was because Falun Dafa was the truth of the universe, and I wanted to safeguard it, even with my life. They were quite touched by that. In 2003, with the help of the U.S. government and fellow practitioners, I made my way to the U.S.